Good morning. Just wait one more minute and see if we can get anyone else on here before we start chatting. just going over the supply list to make sure I had everything here. Our snow has been melted for a while and our yard is full of birds today looking for worms. They're crazy out there. Okay, so let's talk about supplies. Um, I have a lot of my favorites. Um, so when I'm talking about something, if you have a favorite that's different than mine and you want to share, let me know. Or like you can comment in the comment box. Um, I can see those. So if you have questions, um, let me know and I can answer them. Um, if you're watching this not live and you have questions, you can still comment and um, I can answer your questions. Okay, so the first item on our list is needles. You're going to need a needle. <laughs> um, really, most any needle will work fine. I um, have two of the same needle. Shoot. Um, almost the same needle so I normally use the DMC size 5 needle um, it's just what I like um, I know other people don't they're a little bit longer than like tapestry needles um, tapestry needles are a little bit shorter so um, if you feel like a regular needle is too long then try a tapestry needle um, but I like that they're sharp, so I don't feel like my fingers get sore pulling them through the fabric as much. Um, I feel like tap tapestry needles, I feel like are not quite as sharp, which I don't poke my finger as often, but I just, they're just not my favorite. So um, the other thing with tapestry needles is that their eye the eye of the needle is a little bit bigger. Do you see how the eye goes down to here? Let me see. Like the eye of the needle is quite a bit bigger. So like a regular needle, let me do these side by side. So like a regular needle, the eye is here and the tapestry needle, it's down here. So you have a little bit more space to put your thread in with a tapestry needle, um, which is nice when you're working like with six threads or something like that. But um, if you have any kind of needle, you, I mean, you don't have to go buy something specific. So I have on my desk, like a whole pile of needles that are just random sizes that I use occasionally. Um, an ex <coughs> sorry, I'm getting over a little bit of a cold. Um, something that you don't have to have, but that's fun to have if you're looking for something fun are needle minders. Um, this one is from a snarky crafter, I think. It says stitch and flick with a little needle wand. Um, I have a bunch of cute ones from the one that's in the photo that I've been posting um, is from Beck Stitches and it's like a little thing of thread, like of embroidery threads or she has like a sunflower one too. Anyways, needle minders are nice because they'll hold onto your needles on your project. Like this is a magnet. So it just, your fabric goes between it and it'll hold your needle for you. So you don't lose your needle. Um, okay, fabric. So I generally use two kinds. 
um, depending on what I'm working on. So um, just like a regular cotton fabric. So this is like a Kana cotton. It's a little bit thicker than like a quilter's cotton. Um, so it holds the stitches a little bit better. It's a little bit thicker. You can't see through it as much, but you can see like how tightly it's woven. Like you can't see through it very well. Um, so I like that if I'm, if I know I'm going to be doing a lot of smaller stitches, there's not very much stretch in it. I mean, there's a little bit, but, um, yeah, I like the Kona cotton, Kona cotton. I don't know. K O N A. Um, I can find it at Joann's or Hobby Lobby or if you're Michael's Carrie's fabric, I would imagine you could find it there. I generally shop at Joann's. So, um, the other fabric that I really like is linen. So do you see how much thinner or looser, a, loose, a looser weave that is? So you can see through it a lot easier. Um, I really like this. Um, most of the time I prefer linen over anything else because it's nice to work with. It has like a good, like the tiniest bit of stretch without being too like overly stretchy. Like you don't want something that's like a Jersey or something that's going to stretch too much. Um, but I really like linen. I really like how it turns out. I like that it has a little bit of texture. Um, so those are my two favorites. You can really stitch on anything. Like whatever you have, you can use a quilter's cotton. Um, if It's really pretty inexpensive. Um, I would just say double up your fabric if you're gonna use a quilter's cotton because it is a little thinner. Um, it's easier to um, like it'll ripple a little bit more easily. So um, quilter's cotton is not my go-to. I do have some and I've used it. I usually just put something else behind it so that um, if it's a plain color, I just double it up. <coughs> um, but yeah. Next is threads and embroidery floss. So I just use DMC. Um, that is what is close to me. Um, my local Joann's just started doing anchor thread as well, but um, they, uh, I have not started buying it. <laughs> so um, anchor thread is really good. DMC is really good. Um, Cosmo thread, if that's like, we have Cosmo thread in town, like at our small, like quilting shop, but I don't love their colors as much. Um, I just like, I just use DMC. So DMC comes like this. It's gonna have your number down here and then just another piece to hold up there. I know some people take these and they wrap them on bobbins. You can, let me grab, oh, hold on. I don't like bobbins, <laughs> but um, some people will take them and like wrap them on bobbins. These ones are plastic. Um, so I do have a set of bobbins that I will like take with me places so that I have a bunch of colors if I need them. Um, but I mostly keep mine like this. Um, when I'm done with a color, I just like, this is just extra. I just wrap it around the middle. Um, so with DMC colors, you wanna find the end that comes out from the number. If you pull it this way, you're less likely to have like knots. <coughs> um, and then embroidery floss comes six stranded. So you don't have to use all six at a time. You can just use like two or three, which we'll go over how to pull those apart when we're stitching. Um, but anyways, that's what I use. Um, but yeah, anchor comes in a bobbin or in 
it on like a spool. Um, so if you see Anchor, it's it's a really good brand. Um, I tend to avoid like the off-brand stuff that you can buy like big sets for like $3 on Amazon if you can get like 12 colors or whatever, 50 colors, I don't know. Um, just because they are not like as smooth, like this is like really smooth and nice to work with. Um, really inexpensive threads usually catch really easy, they not really easy. Um, so if you can avoid that, I would, um, but whatever you can afford, you can make it work. It just is more likely to get into knots and stuff like that. So, um, if you can avoid it, do. Okay. So embroidery hoops, I have a lot to say about embroidery hoops. I've been trying out new things so when i first started i bought all the bamboo hoops bamboo hoops are great there's nothing wrong with using bamboo hoops um what i like to look for is one that has either a flathead or a phillips head screw right here because it's easier to tighten and loosen i just have a little screwdriver that i can tighten and loosen um, you also want to look for one that doesn't have gaps um, let me see, this one doesn't, this one kind of has one right here. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a gap between the two, which means my fabric is not going to be held very tight right there. That's my biggest complaint about bamboo hoops. Um, you can like get a piece of tape and like wrap it around the ins, the inner hoop. Hold on. These come apart. So you can like wrap it around the inner hoop and then when you put it back in, it's still, it's behind your fabric so you, you won't see it, but it'll hold that piece tighter. The other problem with bamboo hoops is um, sometimes they're not quite circular. They're a little bit off. Um, so I always, um, before I take a hoop apart, I mark, Oh, come on, pen. I mark the center like this, just a little tiny one so that I know, like if this gets off, like over here, then I have an even bigger gap down here. Okay, so this needs to stay, it needs to stay like however it came because if that gets off, you're gonna have a lot more gaps. So bamboo hoops work. They work great. I've never had I've never had big complaints about it, um, but just be careful before you take it apart that you know your middle because you want to avoid gaps. So, bamboo hoops easy to find. You can find them at any craft store. I can find them at Walmart. Um, you can buy them online on Amazon or whatever. So, bamboo hoops. Um, plastic hoops. Now, plastic hoops, let me just tell you, there are some good and some bad. I really, really, really love these plastic hoops. I use them to stitch in all the time because I really like how snug they hold things. I don't finish in them because the colors are all really, really bright and kind of obnoxious. There's like a bright orange one. It's not good. I don't like them. Um, but you want to make sure you find a plastic hoop that has this ridge. Okay, if you have just two pieces of flat plastic like this, it's not going to hold your fabric very well. So this one has a groove and a ridge. So then your fabric fits in there really nice and tight. And then these are really easy to tighten. So super easy love these this one is the loops and threads brand from michael's um or the artiste brand from hobby lobby um they have a six inch one that's black <laughs> it's like the only black one i can find it only comes in six inch the other ones are like this blue or pink or orange or 
I think there's a green. Anyways, they're kind of like really bright colors, but they are super nice to stitch in because they hold everything really, really tight. So I generally stitch in something like this and then I move it to like a bamboo hoop to finish it in because with a bamboo hoop, when I'm finishing, I have an extra layer of fabric so it holds it tighter um, because with a bamboo hoop, I sometimes have to tighten a lot, tighten my fabric while I'm stitching. But with this, I don't have to because it tightens and holds so well. So these are really, really nice to stitch in. I don't like finishing in them just because of the colors. So, um, so I've been experimenting with beechwood hoops. So I bought a couple of different kinds. So um, this one is the Frank Edmonds um, beechwood hoops. I'm not super thrilled with them quite yet because I don't feel like it's as tight as it can go. Like it's, um, like even if I tighten this all the way, like it still feels like the inner hoop is loose and I can't tighten it anymore because this top part is already touching. You see what I mean? So I will still use these, but it also has a sticker on here that is really hard to get off. Stickers on hoops should not be a thing. So anyways, these are the Frank Edmonds ones. Not my favorite, but they look really nice. This is the one that I'm loving and I think I'm gonna get more of. So this one is the brand Elbesi. E-L-B-E-S-E-E. -E -E. And this is just a little tab. No sticky, no problem. Um, it has the screw, which I like, and then this pretty gold, which I just think is really nice. But these loosen and tighten really easily. Um, I've been using it in a project that's on my desk and it has held really tight. Um, it has a little bit of a nicer finish than like the bamboo. Let me just hold those next to each other. So you can see like the color is really nice. It has like, you can kind of see like a little bit of some wood grain a little. So. It's a little fancier, but this is like $1.50 and this is like $5. Or like two and five, like these are a little pricier. Um, but that's up to you. Another option that I generally don't stitch in, but I like to finish in are these faux wood hoops. So these are plastic so this is just a plastic round and then these are flexible okay so they come in round or oval or there's all kinds of different shapes um i don't love stitching in these because i don't feel like they hold quite tight enough for embroidery um they're usually fine for cross stitch but i usually stitch in something like this and then transfer to this to frame it like to finish it the round ones hold tighter then the oval ones, I will never stitch in an oval one because I just, they don't hold tight enough for me. They bother me. Um, but the oval ones would, is nice because since these are flexible, if the oval is this way, then it, then you can just take it off and make it this way. But then if you need this kind of oval, then it just, you just turn your inner hoop and make it an oval. I should have brought one over here, but Anyways, these are flexible, so you can make them fit either horizontal or vertical, depending on your project. So anyways, these are fun. They're close to $5 as well. Um, I usually just buy them on Amazon, um, but I have been seeing them at Hobby Lobby. I don't know that I've seen them at Joann's. They might be there as well, but anyways, these are fun. They look really nice finished because this white is under the fabric. You can't see it. So it's just like this nice like wood frame. So everything you've ever wanted to know about hoops, maybe too much. <laughs> um, okay, scissors. So really you can use any scissors you want. Um, any sharp scissors, you don't need to get fancy. I personally like fancy scissors because 
I use them all day every day so it's fun to have something fancy and fun um, the ones I took that are in the pictures um, I got on Etsy if you just search for embroidery scissors there's tons of fun shapes and colors and all kinds of things so these are my floral ones these are from Hobby Lobby they've started chipping though like the paint on them but they're super sharp and they're little so I can like get in and cut little tiny things these ones are a little bit bigger I like these like when I'm trimming fabric or something but they're nice and sharp and they are little these ones are Westcott from they're just from Walmart they came in a pack with these <laughs> I needed some new um, fabric scissors so um, these are all different sizes so honestly like whatever you have it doesn't really matter embroidery scissors are fun just because they're little and they're really sharp and they usually have a really good pointed end so you can like trim like little tiny things um, but honestly whatever scissors you have will work fine I don't have a lot to say about scissors except that I like them. Do I need more? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, okay, so transferring your pattern to your fabric. Um, you need something to transfer onto your fabric. Um, you can use something as simple as just like a regular pencil um, or something made for embroidery. Well, and these aren't made for embroidery, but I use them for embroidery. So I like the Pilot Friction pens. Um, they come in like a stick pen or like this one is a clickable pen um, or they come in marker. Like this is a fine tip marker. Um, I really like the markers and I really like these clickables. These are my two top favorites. So, um, these are heat erasable pens and markers. So um, they're friction. So when you write and then this is like a rubber end. And so when you erase, it creates heat, which erases the marks. Um, these are not foolproof. They're not like erased forever. Like they do leave ghost lines. Um, so don't don't be like getting crazy and drawing crazy things all over and then expecting it to just disappear and it's gone forever. Like that's not a thing. So <laughs> don't plan on that happening. Um, but, uh, they work great. I have not had big problems. Um, I have occasionally had to do an extra stitch or two here or there to cover something up, which to me is not a big deal. Um, but I like to write with this and then I stitch and then I erase it with my blow dryer. So these are my go-tos. Um, other options are water soluble markers. They're usually blue or purple. I personally don't love getting my work wet after I've stitched it because I always feel like it pulls my stitches loose. So I, I personally don't love to do that, um, but they, they work, they work great. So, and that's what I started with was water soluble. So there's also water soluble pencils. So this one's white, so you can draw on like darker fabrics. Um, I just don't, I don't love these. I still have it. I haven't used it forever. The end is all black. I just don't. I don't love it, but I have it so I can show you. <laughs> um, the other thing that I have been liking for dark fabrics are these chalk mechanical pencils. So this one is the brand Bohine. There's another one, Fonz and Porter. Um, I just found them on Amazon, but they're mechanical pencils and then the lead is chalk. Um, so you can draw on your dark fabrics and then, um, I usually just get like a damp cloth and like, I don't have to like soak it. I can just like get a damp cloth and wipe it, anything that doesn't get covered up. So the only problem is that it's chalk. So 
if while you're working, if you rub it, it will start to disappear. So there is that, um, but I mean, it works. So anyways, that's another option. Um, my only advice, if you're going to use a regular pencil, make sure you're drawing very lightly and um, that you're going to cover every single line that you draw. So trace slowly um, because that's not gonna erase. Like it, it will be staying there. So be careful if you're gonna use a pencil, draw lightly. Don't use a regular pen, don't use a Sharpie. Don't use anything permanent like that. Um, you want something that is gonna be easily covered. Other options are like the sticky solvy, is that what it's called? Um, like you print it on this sheet and then you stick it to your fabric and then it washes away. Um, I've personally never used it because I don't think it sounds fun <laughs> to wash off. I know a lot of people use it. I personally have never. Um, there's also like carbon transfer papers, which I want to order some, I just haven't yet. But I found some the other day that I wanna try. So it's like a carbon paper and you put it on your fabric and then you trace, you put, okay, your fabric and then the carbon transfer and then your pattern. And then you trace your pattern and it marks it onto your fabric. So I was thinking about trying that at some point. I have not yet. Um, I think those are all the options that I can think of. Anyways, there's tons, tons of options, but I'm going to stick with my Pilot Friction pen. <laughs> so, um, okay, that is all I have to say about supplies today. Um, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. And then I will be live again on Thursday at this same time, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and we will go over... Um, how to get your fabric in your hoop and trace your pattern. So if you don't know how to do that, I will walk you through it, don't worry. Um, I know I've been posting in my stories all these people that are ready to go. These are people that already know how to do embroidery. So if you're brand new, don't stress, I will walk you through it. So um, we will do that on Thursday and then you'll have the weekend Thank you so much, S-E-W, so much. <laughs> That's funny, thanks. Um, but anyways, I will walk you through it, so don't stress. And um, yeah, then you'll have the weekend if you don't have all of your supplies to get your supplies and get your hoop ready. And we will start stitching in six days. Monday the 24th, um, we will start stitching. I will post this to my stories so that the information is available, but I'm planning on um, 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time next week. Um, I am the backup babysitter for all of my friends that work. <laughs> so um, I have a friend that has daycare. Her daycare lady is out of town next week. So I have her kids. Um, she teaches morning kindergarten. So they'll get picked up by noon. Um, but um, so I will be live at 1 all next week um, while they are here. So plan on that and let me know if you have questions and I will see you on Thursday. Bye.